the prairies. A land of plenty, blessed with good lands and fertile soils. Yet in the mid-1800s, much of this land had been condemned by Colonel Palliser, dismissed as being totally unsuitable for productive farming. Because of the acute lack of moisture and the unfortunate combination of drought and high winds, he knew firsthand how very dry the region could be, harsh and inhospitable. Yet by the end of the century, settlers had begun to arrive in numbers, bringing with them the farming methods of their homelands in Europe and the United States. Soon after their arrival, the practice of summer fallowing became the accepted method of conserving moisture for the next year's crop. However, this soon proved to be a serious mistake almost a fatal one. In combination with very dry summers, high winds and low prices, vast tracts of land were so seriously eroded that the area and the period became known as the Dust Bowl. It was estimated in 1934, soil erosion was out of control on millions of acres. After a particularly savage drought, the wind started blowing, the soil started moving. Clouds of prairie dust cloaked cities in southern Ontario and even reached the New England states. Grim reminders of the devastating wind erosion of that time can still be found. In heavily eroded fields, blowholes deep enough to hide a truck can be found. Soil drifting became so severe that it buried fences and new ones were built on top. Two and three tier fences can still be seen. The roadside special area signs are another reminder of the protection some badly eroded land still requires. Much previously cultivated land has been seeded back to grass and used only as rangeland. It's a long way back from devastation on the scale of the dirty 30s, but bold and imaginative soil scientists, together with farmers, have gradually developed successful management practices to minimize a reoccurrence. For example, strip cropping to inhibit soil movement field shelter belts to impede blowing and cut down the wind's velocity, and machinery that destroys weeds while at the same time provides the protective cover of crop residues. Yet for all of these new developments, Many of us too easily forget or ignore the lessons of the past, even after just a few generations. In the early decades of this century, two remarkable men, Charles Noble and Azel Palmer, set out to declare war on soil erosion, particularly the tradition of black summer fallowing, which they saw, quite correctly, as a major cause of soil erosion. Both agreed that excessively tilling summer fallow to destroy weeds destroyed the protective cover and thus left the soil vulnerable to erosion. Charles Noble was a farmer in southern Alberta near the town that still bears his name, Nobleford. He was an entrepreneur, an inveterate tinkerer, but most important, a tireless innovator. In concert with 
Asel Palmer, a soil scientist at the Lethbridge Research Station, Noble set out to develop a tillage implement that would kill weeds and at the same time leave the crop residue on the surface to protect the soil. Dr. Palmer recalls, The summer fellow was uh, one of the chief problems, uh, but it wasn't a mistake, it was an, a, a necessity, and it was a matter of learning how to summer follow. If they were going to conserve the moisture, they had to prevent any plant growth. And the way to prevent any plant growth was to cultivate uh, the land frequently enough to kill any plants, weeds, or volunteer grain or anything to, before it got up high enough to use much moisture. And so it meant frequent cultivation. Dr. Palmer was such a vigorous advocate of maintaining a crop residue cover to protect the soil that he earned the nickname Trash Cover Palmer, a handle he still holds proudly. One result of the persistent efforts of Noble and Palmer was, of course, the Noble Blade. The original straight blade was later modified into the lower draft V-shaped model, still in use today. Let's take a closer look at wind erosion. What do we really mean by it? Most erosion begins at a focal point in the field. It could be an exposed knoll or even pulverized soil in tire tracks. We usually visualize it as a huge black cloud of dust in the sky. But there are, in fact, three major mechanisms involved. Suspension is seen as the cloud of dust, although the most obvious, it accounts for less than 15% of the soil loss. But these fine particles, clay and organic matter, may move great distances. Saltation is the most destructive of the processes and accounts for 50 to 75% of the soil loss. Small particles are lifted up to four feet in the air and then leapfrog down on other particles, breaking them up, sending them flying in the air. Eroded land actually looks sandblasted. The third process, surface creep, is seldom obvious but may account for 10 to 25% of the soil loss. Soil particles literally roll along the soil surface. All of these erosional processes cause soil particles to break down, separating the fine clays and organic matters from the coarser silt and sands. The finest particles move furthest, and the coarser particles stay behind, or at least move the least. This means that replacing drift piles from the ditch or fence line does not replace the original soil quality. 